this is it. Today's the big one. Um, I'm excited. What are you talking about? Yeah, the new Final Fantasy VII came out today. So obviously, we're going to go to GameStop and... Oh, the the cert connector thing. Yeah, no, that's important too. Yeah, that's what I meant, actually. I wasn't talking about video games. So, Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today, I am super excited to show everybody the, the biggest part of the Intune suite, in my opinion, which is the Cloud PKI feature. And uh, we're going to kind of talk through it, talk about why we care about it, and uh, just how big of a deal this is. And I'm going to show you how to set it up. So, um, yeah. I mean, Final Fantasy VII is also a really big deal, to be fair. Okay, so before I, I get into exactly why I'm so excited about this, I think it will help to level set um, kind of what's going on here and the idea of SCEP certificates and um, issuing device and user certs. So... Okay, so you have your domain and you have a certificate authority server on the domain. So if you had a computer, it can make requests to the certificate authority and get certs issued back to it. Um, once we introduce Azure though, okay, so that's my cloud PC being managed with Intune. So the question is, even though there is a connection between my domain and Azure, how does the PC get certificates from the CA? So what happened there is this guy would be connected to Intune, okay? And that would ultimately be responsible for um, making requests to the CA on the domain. So yeah, you can say to Intune, hey, I would like to push a SCEP certificate to this PC and I would like to get it from my CA. So Intune would talk to you and as there would be a trust there um, with a connector. And at that point, and as would talk to the CA, the CA would say, I trust you, you're end as I know who you are here. Here's the cert and Intune could deliver that to the cloud PC. Right. And in here we would have an Azure AD app proxy. And don't worry if it looks complicated, that's because it absolutely is. Um, and, and that's the setup, right? But think about this. Uh, one is if you've set this up, you know it is a pain to set up. If you've seen in the past, I did a four part series on it uh, right around the time the pandemic was first going on, um, you know, just to kind of help folks get it going. I originally had to make a four part series because they were my notes. There was my me having to read it every time I would set it up and I set it up a lot. Um, and as you can see with everything else where you have a hybrid setup, there's a lot of fail points here, right? So you know, for there's been other solutions available to kind of circumvent the domain and, you know, doing the cert up here in Azure. So Skepman was a popular one. That was a third party that it will it's still around. It's a third party service. I even did a video on it um, that you connect to Azure and, and it's a service that can essentially act as your CA here and it would broker from Azure. So you wouldn't need the end as but now with the Intune suite, there is an amazing uh, feature called Cloud PKI where we don't need any of this. Okay, so we can literally take all that out and just use Intune to issue SCEP certificates to the Cloud PC. All right, so we talked enough about it, let's set it up. So I'm logged into my tenant. You do need uh, the Intune suite. I believe very soon it'll be a, an available add-on, but I, I don't like to get into the pricing or the licensing. I'm just gonna show you how the feature works. So I'm gonna go to tenant administration and I'm gonna select cloud PKI. And this was my first test of it, but you can ignore this. I'm just going to show you from scratch. So the first thing you do when you go to cloud PKI is you have to create a root cert authority. Remember, and this is what used to be on-prem. Now it's gonna live up here in the cloud. So I'm gonna call this my Rubix Dev Root CA. Now the interesting, is thing, the interesting thing is you can have several. So because I already had that one before, if I wanted to make this an issuing CA, I can select um, the one I created previously. So I can select my Root CA that exists if I wanted to, I can upload my own uh, root cert. For now, we're just gonna make a, a basic root CA. The validity period is up to you. I'm just gonna keep mine at five years. And what are the key usages, right? Um, so for root CA, 
there's lots of options here. We're just gonna do two. We're gonna do server auth and client auth for now um, to keep it basic. Now, what's my common name, right? Um, so to identify the cert, I'm just gonna call it Rubik's Dev Root CA. Um, let's call it MDM Root CA, or let's actually call it Intune. Rubik's Dev Intune Root CA. So that's the common name that it's gonna get. And if you wanted to, you could expound upon that, add the organization, organizational units. Uh, we don't have to do that. Um, and lastly, I am going to set the uh, encryption level and I'm just gonna go with the basic uh, SHA-256. So we're gonna hit next. You can uh, do a scope tag. I'm gonna just leave everything default. And you can't edit it after. Right. And you can only have, I believe, six at the moment and you can't delete them yourself. You have to actually submit a ticket at the moment, but that'll probably change. So I am going to create. It said it was successfully created, so I am going to refresh and there it is. All right. So that is my Rubik's Dev uh, Intune root CA. And the CA authority is Rubik's Dev CA. So very easy to to see and you can get those details. So. Um, now, one thing we have to do at first is we have to get this root CA and get it to our machines. I have a test machine here, and I'm just going to show you. It always feels like I'm explaining a magic trick. Um, let's look at the... Okay, so if we look at this device, the only certs we should have... Um, so we have our normal Intune cert. If we go to Trusted Certificate Authorities... Uh, we have this migration one I pushed, uh, just playing around with stuff. We don't have obviously anything called Rubik's Dev root CA. We have the Microsoft Intune root CA, but, um, from an organizational standpoint, I don't have anything tied to my tenant. So what we are going to do is we're going to grab this cert. Uh, it could harm my computer. I'm, you know what? I'm going to keep it because I know what it is. So I have the root CA in my downloads. Um, now, eventually, this will be baked into the process. You won't have to download it, but for now, we do. All right, now that I have that, I can go to my device configuration. So I can go devices, windows, configuration profiles, and I'm going to add a trusted root. So I'm going to say new policy, Windows 10 and later, templates. And we're just going to go down to trusted certificates. And if you were doing uh, the issuing one as well, you would do that like this too. So I'm going to call this the Rubik's Dev root CA. Um, and we'll describe it uh, root CA from cloud PKI. Not that it matters so much, but. Um, and then we're going to grab it. So it was in our downloads. There it is. It's great. It's going to go in the computer cert root store. You could, if it was a different kind of cert, you would specify it somewhere else, but this will be fine. And we're going to deploy it. Uh, I'm going to do all devices because it's only going to go to Windows devices. And I'm going to create it and we'll let that sync. Okay, so here on the client device, uh, it's been about two, three minutes. Um, let's give it a shot. So we're going to go back to certificates. We're gonna go to pretty much where we where we put it. It's gonna be in trusted root and certificates. So go to the R's and it's there. So the Rubik's Dev Intune root CA is trusted. We can see the details, it's SHA-256. Um, the issuer is from the common name of the CA. And we could say it's key usage. Uh, where are the... Yeah, extended key usage. So this is the two pieces I set it for, server and client auth. So it is here. Okay, so with our root cert deployed to the device, now we have to set up SCEP, which is the ability to deploy cert profiles that come from that root CA. So we're gonna go back to tenant administration, cloud PKI, and now we're gonna set up our issuing CA. Remember I said before, you can do that, or you can bring your own cert, but, um, Rubik's dev issuing issuing CA. Yeah, so basically what happens is now that we have the root, the issuing CA is going to be responsible for giving us that SCEP 
um, skip enrollment. So we're going to tell it the root CA source is already up here. And we're going to choose Rubik's Dev root CA. Okay. It's active. This is, uh, we'll do a, let's do a two year validity period. Now we can choose the type of uh, key usage that we want based off the root. So we're just going to do client off because that's all we're trying to do. So we're going to call this Rubik's Dev issuing CA. Should make it very clear. And of course, it gets its algorithm and key size from the root. So we're going to deploy this. Looks good. And create. So let's hit refresh. And look at us, we got an issuing CA. So one thing that's different about the issuing CA is I want to show you when we click on it, right? There's a little bit of a, what the certificate uh, leaf means here is this is going to be, this is going to tell us what it's actually issuing to the endpoint. So it's not just like the, uh, the trusted route where we throw it up there and deploy it. This generates certs. So you can see when we go to properties, we have way more things now down here. So skip URI is what we're ultimately going to need. So we're going to, we're going to copy that because we're going to have to put that into here. And so we are going to create a new policy and we're going to call, we're going to do templates and we are going to do skip certificate. So we're going to say Rubik's dev skip cert. All right, and now traditionally here, we would get all that information from the app proxy and the connector, but we can just set this up with what we have. Um, so AAD device ID, this is because it's an enter ID join device. Traditionally, if you're deploying skip to a hybrid device, you would have the fully qualified domain name, um, but we don't need that. So we're gonna put this out at uh, one year is fine. The key storage provider, we're gonna tell it to try to use the TPM for usage. We're gonna check both options. We're going to leave this at 2048 to match our root and SHA-2. So we need to choose. Now you can see we don't see the issuing certificate, right? So that's because we only need the root. The issuing looks at the root. So that's going to give us our root cert there. And we are going to choose client off for our purposes. Um, and now here we go. We're going to paste in that... Um, essentially the skep URL and we're going to hit next. So it knows where to get that from. Let's add all devices. And there we go. Just configured a skep cert. All right, let's check on the client. Okay. So now we're taking a look at the client. Um, took about five minutes. Uh, well, it's five minutes now. I'm actually going to, I'm going to check cause I don't know. Um, so we should see it in the personal store. So personal certs, there it is. Rubik's issuing, Rubik's dev issuing CA is who issued it. We could see it's client auth and it's issued to the device AAD ID or enter ID. So what we can do there is we can go to the device uh, and take a look at the hardware for it and see the enter ID is B9EBF. B9EBF. So it was issued correctly. Um, if we go to configuration, we should see a success there. Rubik's Dev Skep Cert success. Um, so that's great. And if we look at the profile, we can see that it was successful from here as well. You know, one question I get asked a lot as someone who sets up Intune is, is the Intune suite worth the price? Um, I've said this before, value is subjective. So, you know, is it worth it to you? Yes or no? It's hard to say. This used to take, I could tell you, all day to set up a CA and Endes, get it right, because oftentimes you'd have to do it again. Um, the fact that we're able to do this in less than 30 minutes, um, it's, it's just amazing, right? And it just blows me away to be able to have this capability. So definitely test it out. Um, for yourself, add the trial and your tenant if you can. Um, let me know in the Discord if you're using this, if you've tried it, what your thoughts are. Um, I, I'd love to know. It'd be really awesome to see what folks start doing with this. So, talk soon. Five, four, three, two.